with, with, with grip as the tyres get a bit too tired. But uh, it'll be interesting to see if, they, if that is what, in fact, the battle team are up to. And I can only say, rather, and there, he, there he comes into the pit just to prove us wrong. And he will now lose not only second place but third place. Indeed, Spinner goes past. And so does the Ferrari. And that, we didn't, I didn't time for Tracy's stop, but that looked like an incredibly quick one to me. But meantime, Patrese is in fourth position as he leaves the pit. And now, on lap 38 out of 59, Nigel Mansell leads by 16 seconds. Ayrton Senna second. Alvareto third. There he is, right behind the Lotus. Patrese still in, in fourth position ahead of Johansson by five seconds. Meantime, Jonathan Palmer is still leading the three-and-a-half litre race, one lap behind the race leaders, and that is De Cesaris off the course again and out of the race now. Andrea De Crasheris, as he's known in Grand Prix circles. And there goes the battle, the fourth and fifth right behind, and you had to try to get down the inside, but Patrese has been shutting the door pretty effectively there for a couple of laps now. Benna second, Alvareto third. Patrese in fourth place, Johansson in fifth place, and very little between them. There's Patrese really driving a magnificent race. And the John Baldwin, David North, Sergio Ridland, and up into second place goes Michele Alvareto by magnificently outfumbling Senna and Senna put off his line, allows Patrese to close them right up behind him, and the crowd roars. Look at this replay. Yes, and he caught Senna napping there. That's a lot like Ayrton Senna. And a very good piece of driving indeed by Michele Alvareto. Patrese through. Incredible. 1.6 seconds between Alvareto and Patrese. And into the pit has come Johansson again in and look at Patrese challenging now and he goes past Alvareto what a fantastic bit of driving Patrese moves up from fourth to second in about 400 yards and Johansson is in the pit lap 46 now Nigel Mansell has gone through to complete the lap he's now 21 seconds ahead of Ricardo Patrese with Alvareto on the right of your screen in third position in the yellow lotus Ayrton Senna from Brazil in fourth place. Thierry Bootman is some 21 seconds in fifth place behind Senna, who is fourth. Ahead of his teammate, Theo Farby, in sixth position. So both the Benetton are in the top six point scoring places, which will be helpful to them in the Constructors' Championship. Jerry Warwick in the Arrows Megatron is in seventh place. Eight, Johansson in the McLaren Tag. Ninth, Beaver. Both arrows in the top nine places. Tenth, Brundle in the Zack Speed. Eleventh, Cathy. Still going in the Othello, which is not something that I expected at this stage of the race. Twelfth is Dana. Thirteenth is Nakajima. Fourteenth, two laps down. Jonathan Palmer leading the three and a half metre race. His teammate Streff is fifteenth. Alio is sixteenth. Fabre in the ATS. Five laps down is seventeenth. And the fastest man on the course now is Teo Farby, who has just gone round in 1 minute 29.8. And Senna has managed to get back past Alvareto, so this race-long duel continues. He got close enough behind him as they got onto the straight to take the slingshot. And uh, Ricardo Patrese is no longer getting away from them, so we can still see a three-way fight for second place. With Luton in the inset in the pit, the gap between Patrese and Senna is down to 1.9 seconds. So Senna has taken half a second out of second place man Patrese's lead, and there he's right up with him now. There's the Ram and BMW. There goes Senna. Alvareto keeping a watching brief behind the yellow Lotus. And still Michael Nigel Mansell out on his own. 20 seconds ahead of this battle. And Johansson now the fastest man on the court. And Patrese. Carlo Patrese in trouble. Patrese stayed right down. It looks very much as if his engine had cut out. So it looks as if his tremendous afternoon's work. It's coming.
coming to a, a premature end. Oh, and what bitter luck. That is Jonathan Palmer in the Tyrrell, the man who was leading the three-and-a-half-metre category out of the San Marino Grand Prix. That means to say, of course, that Streff moves into the lead in the three-and-a-half-litre category. Bootson's car, incidentally, was pushed into the pit, so it looks as though the Benetton is in trouble as up the hill goes Alboreto and into the pit comes Farby. Theo Farby is into the pit in the Benetton. There he is and out of the race in the Benetton. And Derek Warwick is doing well. He is up into fifth position, albeit one lap of trip. Mansell leading on lap 55 out of 59. Senna is 19 seconds behind. So he's gaining, but it's undoubtedly because Mansell is easing up rather than that Senna is gain, uh, gaining through extra speed. Alboreto is third, Johansson is fourth, Warwick is fifth, Patrese is sixth, and Brunsell is in seventh place. And looking like he's going to move up into the points because Patrese is only limping round, his car stricken. And that is the arrows, I hope that's not Warwick. There is the, is the race leader very soon to be starting his last lap, his 59th lap, which is all that separates him between victory in his 8th Grand Prix, and I'm sorry, desperately sorry to tell you that it was Derek Warwick retiring on lap 57 from that point-scoring position. What bitter tragedy. Things do not seem to be going well for Derek, and Martin Brundle, as a result of that, uh, with at least we have the consolation as Nigel Mansell starts his last lap of knowing that an Englishman in fifth place has at least been replaced by another Englishman, Martin Brundle, at the Zach Speed, and this will be the first World Championship point that Zach Speed have ever scored. Yes, as Mansell goes steadily round, he's had a magnificent drive, done everything right really but uh, of course the the only two people who could really have challenged him were well pk didn't even start the race there's a little drop of rain coming down now but probably not enough to trouble anybody at this stage in the race but uh now pk of course that bad accident on friday unable to drive today and then alan frost who was certainly giving nigel a run for his money going out on lap 15 after that it's been pretty plain sailing uh, if you can ever call driving a Grand Prix car that. But uh, he's controlled the race very well from the front. Obviously used his, his boost quite a lot up and down. We can see that in the lap times. But always being able to cover any move from behind and never really under threat. Tremendous drive by Mansell. Yes, Nigel Mansell almost home to win brilliantly his eighth Grand Prix and in the process to take the lead in the 1987 World Championship far earlier than he did in 1986 when it was about halfway through the season. He comes now down into the Varianta Bassa, into the Trabado. He can see the chequered flag. Nigel Mansell, Williams Honda, crosses the line and takes the chequered flag to win the San Marino Grand Prix. Now we wait for Ayrton Senna to come through as the marshals wave their flags of congratulations at the Englishman. What a wonderful race Mansell's driven. Here is Ayrton Senna coming home in second place to score his first World Championship points of 1987. Goes across the line very slowly. He is running out of fuel. Senna's just made it, though. The Ferrari finishes in third place. And so, Nigel Mansell has done it. Victory at San Marino is eighth in his career, and I'm sure a lot more to come. With, in second place, Ayrton Senna, the highest place that the active suspension Lotus Honda has achieved, and there's more to come there. Third, Michele Alboreto in the Ferrari. Fourth, Stefan Johansson in the McLaren tag. A magnificent step for Martin Bundle, first world championship points for Zach Speed. And in sixth position, Sakuru Nakajima in the second Lotus Honda. In the world championship, Nigel Mansell now.